Hello and welcome to the first ever episode 5 of Whovian Hooniverse. You're here with me, Jamie. Me, Lewis. And me, Brian. I'd say that was the best one we've ever done. Possibly. It felt more synchronised than usual. I think... When we, get, when we do get to episode 100, it's just going to be perfect. People are going to think we've walked into a choir until we actually start speaking. Bar- bar- <laughs> short, short quartet. Yeah. So it's the fifth episode of Whovie and Hooniverse, the first ever and the last. It, it's been over a week since we last heard from Brian. What have you been doing? I'm back. Um, lovely weekend in stage with the other half. Unfortunately not Doctor Who related. And you think that's good enough? <laughs> well, I had a good time, that's the most important Does your fiancé listen to the podcast? Not yet. She will do. Okay. Catherine, if you're listening, the podcast is more important than you. <laughs> Layla, if you're listening, the podcast is more important than you too. Actually, speaking of Layla, did you call your wife to let, to let her know what you're doing yeah, right now? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. She knows, she knows. By the way, you, you, you won't know, in last week's episode, I there were some amazing editing skills where... Layla calls like three times in the middle of an episode and you would not know there was a cut in, inside the episode. Excellent, excellent. You wouldn't know. I was going to cut Charity out, but I decided against it because I thought it was hilarious. Wait, is, is Charity not, uh, not looking to be cut out of the episode anyway because uh, she, she doesn't want to be on? Right, she's looking to um, put forward a copyright claim against her voice <laughs> because she did not give, give um, authorization to... She, she, did, she, did, she did not authorize us to put her voice on the podcast. Now, here's the thing. We have recorded confirmation of us saying to Charity, we're recording a podcast. And when she proceeds to say, you're recording right now? Yes, Charity. Hi, guys. <laughs> Am I going to be on the podcast? And when we confirm with her, yes, Charity, you're going to be on the podcast on Sunday. So she can, she has no bearing. If this, if this goes to court, I'm going to win. <laughs> Well, all cars are recorded for training and monitoring <laughs> <Not even> purposes. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got an opening discussion for today's Whovian Hooniverse. We are recording on a Wednesday instead of the usual Friday, so it's going to feel like there's going to be a massive gap between for when we record this episode and the next one. Oh, only for us, though. Well, yeah. Not for the listeners. Or 1,022 of you. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hello, readers. So, I did give you some homework. Yes. What are your favourite companions? Why and how do you see the companion role moving forward? Right, okay. I, I think this is kind of, you know, loaded and uh, way towards, you know, only, only, only two companions, and this is, uh, this is Rory and, uh, and Amelia Pond, you know. Obviously, the, the, the Doctor Who sweethearts, you know, and I think you'd have to rule them out before you could have this, you know, this discussion because everybody, you know, I, I believe anyway, everybody who would have been asked this question would have would have picked those. The reasons why, um, well, you know, the the on screen they're just uh, you know they're on fire together, you know, like they're uh, they're an excellent pairing, and um, you know, uh, th- as well on, on top of that, they they had some pretty good. Some pretty good writing behind them as well. They had the best writing in the entire New Who series, I found. Um, definitely better than, like, Capaldi was a great doctor, he suffered from bad writing. Mm. Eccleston had some decent writing in, in his uh, series, to be fair. David Tennant f- felt, well, he had a good series. Like, I, well, I didn't watch Tennant's Doctor when it was on air, but I found his episodes to be. A lot like Jodie Whittaker's series, you know, episodes are right now. Mm. Sort of disjointed, more standalone than any coercive story um, knitted through. Um, Brian, I gave you some additional uh, homework on this one because you're more familiar with classic Who than we yeah. are. Yeah. So, well, I've gone. I've chosen a companion from each version, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. Old Who for me, is Sarah Jane Smith. Now, Tom Baker's. I am uh, actually familiar with her because of the. Um, the TV show. Yeah. The TV, she had her own TV Sarah show. Sarah Jane Adventures. Yeah, Sarah Jane Adventures. It was horrible. Don't watch it. And <laughs> after we finished class, you are taking over with not watching Sarah Jane Adventures. 
I saw an episode of Sarah Jane and I was just instantly put off. Was it the clown episode? It wasn't, but that would have been funny as hell, you know. Doubt it was that funny, to be honest. Uh, yeah, she was uh, the first sort of strong female companion. I made a few notes about companions in the old days were just there to uh, be a link between the viewer and Doctor Who. Yeah, the right. Doctor, should I say? I'll commit a cardinal yeah, I'll, sin there. I was going to ask you about that, because in New Who, the companion is always a representation of the modern day human being. Well, the modern day British woman, or well, male in this case. So is it, was it the same case in Classic Who, or is it just a representation of a person back then? Well, they were definitely um, contemporary. Yeah, but they were the, the female companions were there just to scream a lot and be rescued in the early episodes. So that was just everyone's opinion of women back then anyway, then, yeah. wasn't it? yeah. I mean, it's like, um, for example, Amy, she made no apologies. Like, at one point, she literally um, answered the door dressed in a skimpy police girl outfit because she was a. What was the word? It wasn't a call girl. It was something. She was a kissogram. A kissogram, that was it. And she made no apologies, like, yeah, so what? But that's what I always liked about it, like, yeah, so what? Exactly. Whereas in the old days, the female companions were teachers. Like really? Barbara. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And journalists like Sarah Jane Smith. Yeah, so like my thoughts on the matter are, um, I prefer so like some of the companions they feel more like objects in the actual show. They've got no reason to be there other mm. than to, um, like you said, scream a lot. They don't actually have any input in the actual story. Like I forgot what their names are: uh, Yaz, Ryan, and Graham in the current series. They have no bearing in the actual show. Like Doc. Jodie Whittaker's Doctor, Who, um, Doctor series could have gone exactly the same without those characters. Mm. Like they have a role in the show, just because. Well, you have you need something to do, so we we'll go off on the own. But we've got no reason to be there at all. Graham's there because oh, my wife's died, which is sad. I but then it's like, so what? Yeah, I think they don't interact with the storyline as well as they should do. They, but they do have their own little side stories going on at the same time. Like, for instance, the side story with uh, Ryan and uh, and his dad. You know, very emotive piece. You know, like I really, I said then. I like, I like Ryan the, is my favorite character. It was not my favorite character. The Doctor's always been favorite. <laughs> but um, Ryan's probably the best companion in the new series. But that doesn't make him a good companion. Mm. He's still horrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I prefer Rose over these three, these three companions. And I don't like you, Lewis. I don't like Rose either. <laughs> Rose Tyler, Rose Byler. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, Rory and Amy had an actual. They made the Doctor a secondary character. Yeah. In their entire, it would, we might as well call it Doctor Who. No, Rory and Amy starring Doctor Who. Because <laughs> it, it was their story. It, it was their story, and the Doctor happened to be taking part in it, and that's. It was, I guess, because it was such so fresh as well. Yeah. Such a new take on Doctor Who. I kind of hoped they'd keep it moving forward. Like you know, like I said last week, um, was it was it Oswin or something? Oswin. But, uh, yeah. You know, from the day of the Doctor, that lady with the scarf and glasses. She would have been a great Osgood. Oh, is it Osgood? Yes. I, I thought it was Oswin. <laughs> Thank God, Brian's here. <laughs> she would have made a great companion because like we've been made familiar with her, and she would she. I, she there's no she reason why she can't it. become a companion. Mm. She doesn't know she's a Zygon anymore. No. <laughs> so she's still kicking about. Somewhere. Despite Missy's best attempts. Mm. Well, she's kicking about in the same sense where Jenny, uh, the Doctor's daughter, is also kicking about, who would have also been a great companion. Um, but now she's too busy having babies with her father in the series. <laughs> she's a bit weird, but okay. But yeah, like... I think moving forward, like the companions are not really a big fan of the uh, Graham, Yaz, and Ryan. Mm. I mean, I, I, I was pleasantly surprised by Bradley Walsh. Really? I thought, he, I wouldn't say bought a lot for the show, but he wasn't as bad as I thought he would have been. I did hear he's up when Ryan called him Grandad. He's, like. quite, a, he's, yeah. he's a, quite an accomplished actor, yeah. as well as a bloke who goofs about on the chase. That's where I know him from. Yeah, right. Okay. He's certainly done a lot of serious acting. Mm. Uh, on oh, TV dramas. A lot of TV dramas and that sort of thing. Yeah. So um, 
Well, I guess it, get, it went from a chase to being chased in the doctor. Ah, Badum. very good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I think for the next series, we really need something to happen with the companions. Otherwise, mm-hmm. the companions make the show in New yeah. Who. Like in, yeah. the, in the old series, the doctor made the show, but now it's we need to make the companion the most interesting character because. With a doctor, we know everything there is to know. A lot of the mystery is gone with the doctor. Do we really know everything there is to know? What's yeah. the doctor's name? The doctor. It's the only name he'll ever need. It's John Smith. <laughs> Dr. Or, John Disco. Or it's DR Who. Um, I forgot what his name is now, who played by the really bad spin off in that film. He was in Star Wars. Peter Cushing. Peter Cushing. Yeah, he was Doctor Who at one point. Well, that was his actual name in the uh, two films. It was actual, actually Doctor Who. So there you go, <laughs> Lewis. It was actually Doctor Who. So, moving on to Lewis's segment. No. Nope. Now, Lewis yeah. has his own section now. I do, yes. Who News has gone? Unless he wants to rename it Who News. It's up to him. It's his, it's his section now. So... This is uh, it's put it's been put down as Lou News. I've, I've written Lou News on my script, but well, it's not really you know, it's a long story. But go on, Lewis. Right. So initially, I haven't really put much thought into the title, um, you know, and I, maybe that's that's something for another day. I'll get onto that. But here we go for the uh, this week's uh, title in progress: Lou News. Is there a theme song? There isn't currently. I will. I will look into that. Yes, well. sing a theme song. Um, is who news with Lewis? <laughs> who news with Lewis? Who knew the blue BBC could blow this? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, in, uh, in in terms of what's happening in uh, in, in the Hooniverse this um, you know this week, um, basically, uh, so there there are a few bits here. Um, first off, Jodie Whittaker has been offered the freedom of the City of London. The uh, the Court of Common Council have given the stamp of approval, and this. This um, offer, this is offered to people who have been affiliated with the City of London, and Jodie Whittaker is an alumni of the Guildhall School of Music and Drama within the City of London. So, what does that mean, freedom of the City of London? Right. So, it, it doesn't mean it, the entire of London. You know, like the you know the the. the what city. does it mean? You the, can go into city. anyone's house and do whatever you want. No, I, I I don't reckon it does. Basically, the City of London is actually a small city inside London. It's a square um, mile. It's a square mile of London. Uh, it, it's got a lot of history to it and I, I do you know it's quite interesting look it up online but the basic crack is back when the Romans took over they couldn't take over the city of London so they had to uh, they, they had to sort of just build around it and um, th- there was there's some pomp and ritual that goes on whereby um, the uh, king or queen of the day is not allowed to enter the city of London without the city of London's permission the City of London has guild halls, and uh, each each guild um, you can join a guild in the City of London, and each guild deals with different things such as um, you know uh, singing drama, um, uh, fishery, smithing, any, anything basically. There's a there's a good number of guilds, and either way we won't get that far into it today. Good but number of girls or guilds? Guilds. Okay. Guilds, yeah. 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 Sure. Well, there's guilds there as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I, actually, I run a guild on Lord of the Rings Online. It's called yeah. the Oncoming Storm. Excellent. Anyway, Excellent. Yeah. So so yeah, that's that's something that's happened. I mean, she's she's um, you know oh, there's only uh, I believe uh, hundred women who who have this um, who have this. Uh, so it's title. a it's a male dominated. It's, it's a male dominated okay. thing. Yeah. So what do I have to do as a male to get into the Freedom of City of London? Well, you have to be affiliated with the City of London first, and then so what? Do up. do something great for them to be able to. Uh, so like be the doctor. Be the doctor. Yeah, if you're the doctor, if you're the doctor, then you, you might get. Yeah, it's got some bad news for you. Yeah. Okay. I can't be no. in the show anymore because I'm a doctor. Well, no, you can get us the inside information then. Make my job a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I've got some exciting news. Um, we, we've seen the first hints on what might be coming up in the new series. Um, okay. This was, uh, you know, uh, brought to us by Radio Times this, this um, you know, this week, uh, basically. Radio Times. Uh, <laughs> 
Chris, uh, Chris Chibnall has suggested uh, a new story for Yaz is coming up. Um, a young fan had, had asked him, uh, you know. Um, so they heard my pleas about had asked him having a storyline for the companions other than existing. Apparently, so were you, were you that young fan? Were you hiding in the crowd? And, uh, anyway. Um, Please give him more opportunities <laughs> to act within the show and give him their own storyline. So, so it does buy into what you were saying earlier, yeah, that the uh, companions really aren't, uh, you know, the centrepiece of this. Uh, the fact that there needs to be a news piece on the yeah. companion having a storyline speaks volumes to how much of an how much of an impact they actually have on the show, yeah. which is not at all. So he, he was basically he was asking whether Yaz would get more uh, more stage time and as well uh, whether she'd be joining the police force. And Chibnall's um, response to this was. I think I think a few of these questions will be answered in the forthcoming season. You know, so chip no. Yeah. Uh, so so chip very very cryptic. We, we there's no, there's no yes there. You know, but um, at, at the same time, it's it's a nice little tip. Chip no is Doctor Who's Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> wow, that's strong. Whoa, that is wow. that is some serious allegation. I'm gonna there. tweet that tonight. It's gonna get so much traction. <laughs> it's gonna destroy his career. I'm gonna end that guy. He is destroying Doctor Who. Okay, Jamie, that that is a very uh, very. Strong Misa, I'm a doctor. <laughs> For, Misa, no light Daleks. <laughs> I I can refer you to a few characters in classic Who who have much better claim to be Jar Jar Binks than a writer. <laughs> right, Google okay. Chameleon. Chameleon, K. excellent. <laughs> Right. So, uh, any uh, right? Any thoughts on on this guy? Is you know, um, is is it something you like to see? Yes, as a you know. What well, um, as discussed uh, in the opening been... section? Yes. 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 All and the companions. Yes. Need but please don't let Chibnall write it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Chibnall's the showrunner. Yeah, the he he approves all the writing. Oh, does he approve all the writing? That's okay, what's, yeah. his his role. So basically, a showrunner in Doctor Who. They might not write all the episodes, they do produce all the episodes, yeah. and they say yes and no to everything. He's been saying yes to all the bad stuff and no to all the good stuff. Mm, mm, I see. Uh, so, yeah, uh, show sure writers have hinted uh, we could see the return of classic Doctor Who characters in, like, like upcoming, who? in upcoming season. I think by characters they mean, they mean enemies, you know, like, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Daleks, you know. Uh, They're not classic yeah, I, I I understand this, but this is the way the article was written, so this is the way I'm, uh, you know, I, and it does it does sort of uh, lead to uh, you know misunderstandings mm. here because you're thinking classic classic monsters, classic characters. You're thinking uh, something from the deep dark past from the who from the who story, who story, yeah, yeah, of of Doctor Who. But um, yeah, they're the saying uh, basically. Um, yeah, because you know, in the in the first in the first season, we didn't see any any of the old enemies. You know, we didn't see the Daleks, we didn't see the Cybermen. We did we see the Zygons? We saw the Daleks in the last in the in the, in the Christmas special. The um, you talk about New Who? Yes. Right. The Daleks were in Eccleston series. No, 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 no. We're talking about Whitaker's Whitaker's first, first series. I don't uh, think Chibnall should be allowed anywhere near any classic enemies. <laughs> But either way, it should be allowed near Doctor Who or would, anything. It would be nice to is, see is, some of the some of the uh, you know some of the older enemies coming back after um, you know after the first season. Do you think Chibnall's breathing? I hope not. Very harsh. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is I seriously like, harsh. I, but I like the I mean, you, you carry on trying to destroy him. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of classic I, enemies? I want to see more Santarans. I think they're great. Santaran hot. Santaran oh yeah, hot. yeah. <laughs> The, the the clones aren't the, the pod number uh, number pod number twelve or yeah they, they haven't appeared as an enemy yeah. since Tenon but have only been in um, in Doctor Who as comic relief mm, yes. since then which is a shame yeah. we've kind of ruined some Torrens in that sense actually haven't yeah. they by just having those stupid potatoes well yeah. they could be very brave and bring back the Santarans mortal enemy the Rutans I was going to ask you about that. What sort of enemies should we see from Classic Who? Like, you'd want to see a return? Most of them have been brought back, really. Have they? Yeah. Should they like, what about that slime that you tried to show me the other week? That was um, a man being transformed into a wound from Ark in Space. It was horrible. <laughs> I had, night, I, I had nightmares about bad. it. Like, no, not the special effects, anything but that. <laughs> I was watching an old video of a Dalek, actually. You could see this guy's feet underneath. Running along, like oh my god! 
Right. So, in yeah, you know, in in sense of this, basically, the question that was asked was, uh, you know, um, whether whether we'd see any of the, you know, the, any of the bad guys, the the monsters, um, in in the second season, as the first season was kind of void of them, and uh, uh, one of the writers um, advised, uh, well, maybe we'll do some classic monsters then, you know, um, yeah, so. You guys, uh, classic monsters. You you up for seeing some more Daleks? Maybe some Cybermen in there. You know. My favorite enemy in Doctor Who, it's not a classic enemy. Well, I don't. Know. What, in what sense do you call them a classic enemy? But um, do, my, they, do they appear in the classic series? No. Yeah. But then, a Weeping Angel could be considered a classic of its point. Yeah, I, I think so. that was one of the things that they they said yeah. as a classic enemy, but I think. The article, the the article has kind of confused it here that I was uh, that I was researching because yeah. they were calling it the classic enemy, and you could you could meet, make, take that to mean from classic who? Yeah, you know, it could be a Dalek thing. Would you like some Marty? <laughs> <laughs> my favorite enemy in Doctor Who is the Silence. The Silence are amazing. Yeah, like, I would that like was to some, see some more of the Silence. Probably the scariest enemy in my opinion yeah. as well. Everyone says, "Oh, do we have no the bloody Silence?" Because mm. it could literally be anywhere you just yeah. don't remember seeing it it was like in the first episode of Doctor Who where you could only see the enemy out the corner of your eye I was like I love it when they put some real world mentality you know like some sort of childhood superstition like there's something there why is it gone or you can only see out the corner of your eye but when you look it's gone and it's like it's all that childhood superstition that I absolutely love I kind of want them to bring that back like something that hides in your bed you know so it's just yeah. something to like sort of reignite childhood fear yeah yeah and that's what the silence was for me because it actually did creep me out a bit. Did you feel though that by you know by the end of sort of Smith's era, um, the silence had sort of been uh, nerfed in a way? You know, like they weren't as scary anymore. You, they were more just. I, I think they were a bit overused. Yeah. Um, I think you mentioned there was a haunted house one, wasn't there? And the silence were in that. Yeah. Yeah, and they were they were actually members of the papal mainframe, the Church of the Papal Mainframe. You know, um, I, I want to see more storylines with the Church of the Papal Mainframe to tell you the truth, because it sounds like a, a fun little John. You know, yeah. in in um, the episode uh, Christmas, I believe it was you know the town called Christmas, wasn't it? No, town no, called uh, Smith. Where they got the Tren- Trenzalore, the the Church of the Papal Mainframe. Doctor. Oh so, yeah. But you've seen them. You've seen them in previous episodes where they've been like an armed force or something like that. They they're a, they're like a literal armed force. They go they go about the universe, kicking ass and taking names. Uh, there aren't any many, many classic era enemies that haven't been brought back. Uh, one that springs to mind the Sea Devils, who were marine cousins of the Silurians. Mm. There was one classic enemy that was brought back, but was only used once and not to. Um, a large extent, just a sort of a sort of like a one-off. But you know, the Ice Warriors, yes, mm-hmm. would have been a gr- would be. A, I'd love to see the Ice Warriors in an actual episode because obviously I've never seen Classic Who, other than the horrible yeah. first episode. So I'd love to. And the uh, do you remember it's one of the submarine I was stuck in a submarine with an Ice Warrior. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I remember yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That was amazing. Like, wow, oh, I've never seen an ice boy in front of Google. Like, wow, makeup back then was horrible. But <laughs> it it was such a, it's such a cool enemy. I'd love to see him and bring. That's what I thought. You know, Tim Shaw. I uh, thought I thought it might be an ice warrior at yeah. one point, but it turned out it wasn't. I thought we were planning an invasion. I thought this is going to be the storyline. The ice warriors are taking over Earth, but Chibnall, Jar Jar, but Jar Jar Chibnall can't do that. <laughs> Okay, so the last piece on our roster here, well, it's just a rumour, really. Um, there is a rumour that Chibnall could be leaving the show after the Paul ratings. Oh, praise George Lucas. Season 11. <laughs> I, know, I knew you would love this piece. Basically, this, this comes from um, uh, Starburst magazine. Oh, never mind. So, so it, yeah, it might not, as well come from the Daily okay. Star or the Daily Mail. So, or the Sun. Did it used to be called Opal Fruits magazine? Suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Marathons. Excellent. Um, right, so suggestions of new showrunners include Toby Whitehouse, uh, Nicholas Briggs, and Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman, who wrote uh, two of the episodes of Matt Smith's Doctor, which I didn't know before, and I was uh, kind of like, we yeah, discussed this before. Yeah. He, wrote yeah. Doctor, really? he wrote Doctor's Wife, and what was the one called? We were talking about this ten minutes ago. Yeah. So the Doctor's Wife, mm-hmm. we all know that episode. Yeah. Probably one of the mo- most famous episodes. Yeah, with the TARDIS. The other one I can describe to you. 
and everyone will know what it was because it's where the doctor got handles. Oh, it's uh, Nightmare yeah. and Silver. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, I did. Where they go to be? I, um, I was reading park. about this yeah. yesterday. I shouldn't have <laughs> known this. <laughs> but um, Neil Gaiman. Yeah. I don't think he'll be coming on to do the Doctor. We were looking him up, he's a and busy boy. he's very oh, busy. Uh, you know, he's got yeah. like twenty projects in the works definitely, for yeah. next year. Yeah, he's a, he's a very sought after author. You know, um, he's, he's written some really uh, some really excellent uh, pieces. Uh, he even co-wrote a book called uh, I want to say Good Omens with Terry Pratchett. I think that did pop up in my mm-hmm. searches. Mm-hmm. Neil Gaiman, as much as I'd love to see him as a showrunner for Doctor Who, I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, he does do a lot of work in in TV series, mm-hmm. in, um, but never as a showrunner. Mm-hmm. It's usually on as a screenwriter or a, or sometimes a producer, but just for the odd episode. Mm-hmm. It never stays on for an entire show. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think his schedule's too busy. And if he did, yeah, I mean, he, if he if they did get him on. I think Doctor Who would suffer. Well, he's he's only just finished uh, season two of American Gods as well, you know. So he's probably going to be called out for a third season on yeah. that. It's it's doing particularly well. Yeah, so. but the issue is like so we're already getting yeah. massive gaps in Doctor Who, where we're going an entire year almost now. Yeah. Without Doctor Who, if Neil Gaiman came in, we'd probably get it'd end up like Sherlock. Yeah, it's eighteen months. Two year gap. So Sherlock, who, it's more like ten years. <laughs> so, so who would you suggest then as the showrunner? How are those? Toby Whitehouse. Yeah. Or Nicholas Briggs, to be honest. Anyone that's not Chris Chibnall, really. <laughs> You've really got a thing against Chibnall, haven't you? It's. It, I, I, I hate him. It's just systematic destruction of like, Doctor Who. Jodie Whittaker's like such an amazing actress. She's probably one of the finest um, actresses around right now, mm-hmm. British actresses. Yeah. She was in Broadchurch, she smashed it. I was, you know, from the moment she was announced, I was looking up all her work. She's brilliant, but she's been, act- she's a child actor, mm. so she's no stranger to, you know, to the screen, or the like, of a big screen. But then Tubnall comes in, and he comes from Broadchurch as well. So I thought, yes, he's gonna be amazing. Yeah, yeah, but no, he just Jar Jar Binks the entire series. Okay. So I, I want Tubnall out. I'm willing to give him a second shot. Like I'm very impartial, so if the series is good, I'll say it's good. Like there were a lot of good episodes in the series. Like um, uh, they, they were all good, but just that they were just good. Mm. I want amazing episodes. I want um, Matt Smith episodes. Level episodes. Yeah. yeah. Like Joy Dewick, Joy in a Matt Smith episode would have been amazing. Yeah. You know, it's it's about it's about the writing and the acting. Acting is top notch, um, from everyone in the show. It's the it's the writing that's letting it that's that's letting it down. But you can't blame the writers. You have to blame the person who said yes to all the writing and how the story is going to develop. Is there any more Lou news? No, that's that's the top and the bottom of the news to it's today. It's nothing like Jar Jar Binks making a guest appearance in an episode. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it episode ten. <laughs> <laughs> so the next series, well, next series, next section, voting in the TARDIS. Excellent. So. The latest uh, poll was, what is your favourite science fiction novel turned film? Would that to do the honours, Brian? What were the options? Uh, the options were Hitchhiker's Guide, War of the Worlds, Logan's Run the Time Machine. How much? Shock she missed off Planet of the Apes. Oh. 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 I'm so sorry. But you weren't here. <laughs> oh, it's my <laughs> fault, then. <Steve. laughs> like, if you, if you turned up for class, you'd have got the homework. <laughs> Plus it was Lu- it was Lewis's choice, so he made a lot of these um, choices, and some some Planet, comments. Planet of the Apes just we got some comments, uh, Lou. If, you, if you'd like to do the op- the okay. honors, um, we've got at at the real Jedi mom. 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 <laughs> American. American. <laughs> uh, Hitchhiker's Guide is my favorite book on the list, but the film sucked. That's definitely American. Oh, that was a brilliant American accent. I'm gonna I'm gonna write to her and ask her if she can read it out so we can see how bad you did it. <laughs> and we've also got to read the next one as well, Luke. Go for okay, it. so it's uh, it's Benji one. <laughs> I'm doing the American accent. Just do it in American. So it's Ben one one zero one seven three, and he said War of the Worlds, the 1950s one. Put put the uh, put the book to the film, which is most important to me in 2000. 
to me is 2001. All right. Let me reread yeah, that. Yeah, you, you reread that because that, you know. War of the Worlds, the 1951. That's the one you chose, Lewis. You're missing out the, the punctuation, ah, right, which is okay. very clearly yeah, placed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but for book to the film, which is most important to me, is 2001. Oh, like. Referring to Space, Space Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah, which, yeah, yeah. by the way, wasn't included in the list because 2001 Space Odyssey and the film were released together. And it's not a book to film adaptation. It's as much of a book to film adaptation as Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. So, which do you think won? I think it's quite clear. Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, I'm saying. Right, Bray? Uh, I'm going War of the Worlds. Really? Yeah. Which would you have voted for? Hitchhiker's Guide, obviously. <laughs> See, I'm with the real Jedi Mom here. Hitchhiker's Guide, TV series, books, radio shows were absolutely amazing and hilarious. The film was a bit meh. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking about the series, aren't I? Mm. So yes. I, w- I wouldn't have voted for the film. Yeah. No, Just bear in mind, it's, it's the, um, the series book, to book to novel. Book to novel? Yeah. Book to novel? <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, book to novel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write a novel on this book. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever thought of that. It's, um, no. Book to film. N- novel to film. Mm. Like, my favourite slogan, my favourite science fiction book is Logan's Run but once you've read in a lot of cases when you've read the book the film is, the film is horrible I just broke the chair are you, are you okay? <laughs> yeah Yeah. so so in that instance like I, I voted for Logan's Run in the end because it, it was a very difficult one like I, I haven't read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy but I really enjoyed the film but that's probably because I never yeah. read the book for example, so it's a very difficult one. I know who won, so it's unfair for me yeah. to say who I feel would have won. Yeah. But I'll I will announce the answers. It was a landslide victory, by the way. And mm-hmm. um, the poll is still running, but that's because we've, uh, we're we're recording a bit earlier this week. Hitchhiker's Guide currently stands at sixty two percent. So that's not going to change by the time it goes mm-hmm. up. The second and third place might change, though. Mm-hmm. The time Machine, fifteen percent. War of the Worlds, fourteen percent. Logan's Run, nine percent. Which is a big shame. I w- I've been trying to avoid landslide um, yeah. victories. Um, I kind of thought Logan's Run, Hitchhikers would be kind mm. of on the same turf. Drastically wrong there, but I think a lot of people who would have voted Logan's Run voted for Hitchhikers. I think, I think with Hitchhikers it's, it's got a lot of crossover into comedy and a lot of people appreciate comedy so I yeah, mean, that's doesn't possibly why it necessarily feel just purely to sci-fi fans. yeah exactly um, mm. I, think, I think though we missed out you know we missed out another one that should have got a, um, a look in which is um, Do Android Dream of Electric Sh- Sheep Blade Runner we, it, that would have probably challenged Hitchhiker's Guide, you know, because it has a serious cult following. Was that a famous novelization before the film, though? Yeah, it was. It was uh, Philip K. Dick. He's I, like I've, I've seen the first film. I watched it recently. I loved was, it. It was amazing. Like, yeah, it was a Still need to see the sequel. Novel. Yeah, it was. Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep yeah. is the novel. Yeah. What do you think the next poll should be? I have actually got a, got a suggestion for this. I, I've been doing my research. Brian, today. because it's your turn to uh, choose. <laughs> I've, I've come down here, best monster in sci-fi, excluding Doctor Who. I like Brian's option. You like Brian's yeah. option? Yeah, it's Brian's choice, so you, is, know, you give yeah. yours and Brian's going to have a final say. Oh, uh, right, which one to do, yeah, fair enough. Right, so my, um, my, my idea was the best device in sci-fi. I've actually got a list of devices that I'd put on there as so well, so but we could switch it up, you know. Like what kind of or, devices are we talking? Uh, we're talking like, uh, you know, the hover, hoverboard from Back to the Future, um, the nebulizer from Men in Black, uh, transport system from Star Trek. The, uh, right. You know. Here's what um, I want you to do, because I don't think we should use that, because there's a a severe character limit when writing polls. I think it was like a 20 character limit. Mm. That's why it says Hitchhiker's Guide, not Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, and I think Hoverboard is too broad if you, if you, want, to, if you want to tie it to a, a specific series. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it might as well say Sword. It's a little bit harder yeah. to, to write. It's a good idea, but I think you should work on your options a bit. More. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. So, limited to yeah. 10 characters or less. Uh, Brian, what sort of monsters are we thinking? Good question. You haven't thought that far, had you? I know. I just wrote my best monster in sci-fi. Best monster in sci-fi. I'm trying to think of something. Uh, my favourite monster in all of sci-fi is the Rancor. Mm. 
That's my favourite monster. Mm. That one? I suppose yeah. it's a few in Star Wars. Right, yeah. so basically, Lewis, so you really confused, the Rancor is when Luke Skywalker no, gets thrown I, into I, the I pit it. and he I fights it, it and I it hurt my feet. It died. Spoiler yeah, alert. It, it did die. Spoiler it alert for, for a 50 year old film. <laughs> <laughs> did, did it not get a giant gate squashed on its head or something like yeah, that? Yeah, and you know, when its keeper came, it started crying. Mm. like that. It breaks your heart. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. We need to make a spin off mm-hmm. film just about the Rancor running free. There's a tree stump monster in Flash Gordon. A tree stalk monster. Tree, st- tree stump monster. I mean, how are we defining I'll, I'll tell you when I last saw that film, I was seven years old. So I'll tell you, I'm, I'll tell you how much I remember of that film. Flash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm that old. I went to the cinema to see it. You're not that old. It's not like you remember. At least in 1980, so. Okay. <laughs> I am old. He was a grown up in the 80s. Holy hell. I was eight. <laughs> Grown so, up eight. <laughs> I'm not a grown up forty seven, so <laughs> I'm not a grown up twenty eight. <laughs> so, uh, what? How are we defining Guess monsters? Are, age. They, uh, <laughs> are they? Uh, do they? Do they have to be? Do they have to be monsterish, or can they have monsterish ability? Like, for instance, would you classify well, uh, Q from Star Trek as a monster? Maybe we could say he has ability, the ability to. Uh, I think what Brian's thinking is something like so best buddy. Yeah, in like sci-fi then. But well, like monsterish. Monsterish. So we're talking, Ra Gur. Well, yeah, Ra Gur. Yeah. No, no. Hello, how are you? I'm gonna kill you. Like yeah. the master's not a monster, but the Dalek is a monster. Is, is that what you're going for, Brian? Yeah, that's sort of yeah. Oh, I'm okay. quite happy with Best Buddy, really. So, okay, we, you we could have been the merciless from uh, I, I, like, I like Monster. <laughs> <laughs> monster, Monster part's quite good. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll stick to Monster. I think it's got a good ring to it. Best yeah. sci- science fiction monster. There were blobs in various American. Mm. Z- I, I, the blob. I, the, in fact, the blob. <laughs> yeah, the blob. Okay, I, I, I tell you what, what then, Brian. Because uh, we'll move on to Rehu. Yeah. What I want you to do. Yeah. Yeah, that rhymes. Is um, if you could message me later on with what your options would be for yeah. best monster. I can do some research. Yeah. You two talk about. <laughs> yeah. Class, we... because I refuse to watch it. Okay. okay. Fair enough. We only. This is only four options. I make one of them rancor. <laughs> this is going to be a very <coughs> short discussion because I uh, only had time to watch the first twenty. Minutes. No. <laughs> right. Can I just say. Episode 4 yeah. of Class was amazing. You haven't seen it all the way to the end. I've it's, seen it's not as good. Episode 2 is the best episode, okay? Yeah. Followed by... This is like the second best episode, mm. okay? It was amazing. There's this new enemy, it's like Blossom, and it's just taking over the world, and it's... it's nothing actually happens with the Blossom in this episode, but you've not finished it yet, have you? No. I Do you want to spoil this? I haven't I haven't actually met the blossom yet. It's not met twenty okay. minutes in, so The Blossom's everywhere. Yeah. You see it falling from the sky. Ah, was that what that leaf I, I thought they were going with a with, you know, like the um uh, Clara Oswald bit with, with the leaf falling no. but yeah, so in, that, in the beginning that, of the episode. So that blossom was a single blossom that came from yeah. a crack in time space. Ah, right. Okay. That blossom t- um takes a bite out of you. Yeah. I mean, it multiplies instantly until it runs out of energy they got from blood, yeah, yeah. and it's killing all the birds. It's killing all of the um, squirrels. So, so you don't notice it, but halfway through the episode, so where about where you are right now, you you can no longer hear birds. You can no longer see any squirrels. Excellent. They're all gone. So it's really good um, sort of. Well, within the first within the first twenty minutes uh, that I've that I've watched, it does seem like one of the better episodes of the bunch. You know, um, I uh, I've watched up to and just past the contra- confrontation between April yeah. and her father. This is the most complicated yeah. episode story wise. There are about four different stories. There's one with um, what's the name of the woman in the wheelchair? No, oh, April. April. There's one with April where she's got issues with her father. Yeah, no, I've seen. And, and she's sharing a heart with the Night King. Who's who's trying Shadow to King. bind it to himself? Yeah. Yeah. and he's got another story um, himself where he's trying to get his heart back, and he's having his own issues in the shadow realm. Mm-hmm. There's another one with Miss um, Quill, yeah. who's um, who's doesn't want to live her life as a uh, as a slave to the prince. What's with the head teacher as well? Because I think something something's going on with the head teacher. I'll, she, she, I'll, I'll get to that yeah, in a second. Yeah, yeah. I'll get to that in a second. So there's a one with Miss Quill where she wants to um, she doesn't want to be a slave to the prince anymore it's not fair it's unethical mm-hmm. 
you know, at one, one point she said, if we ever met on the battlefield, and the prince goes, well, we didn't, and I order you to do it, and actually starts ordering her around, she can't refuse because of the thing inside her head. Yeah. The head teacher, we don't know who she is, she doesn't seem to be a threat, mm. or is she? But she um, says, you need to help us deal with the blossom, and then we can look to, you help us with the blossom, and we'll get rid of the thing from your head. Which would lead uh, which would lead us on to the next episode. Now the trailer for the next episode, there's so much blossom it's been multiplying so drastically. People are dying. People are getting covered in this blossom. Mm-hmm. You're gonna love the episode, Lewis. It's amazing. Yeah. Not a lot happens in the episode, but everything happens. It's this episode is pretty much seeding the rest of the series of the last four episodes, and it's gonna be amazing. Well, uh, it's one of the you know you get one of those um, I call them segue episodes where not a lot happens. They yeah. just starting the story for what's going seeding, to happen seeding yeah. for the next episode yeah the seeding yeah, yeah. it's amazing yeah. I absolutely love it it's Chekhov's gun yeah, yeah it's Chekhov's yeah, gun it is. because this is the next part you know the, where they keep going on about the um, where all the dead people go who are the yeah. spirits in the box yeah, yeah, yeah. that's Chekhov's gun mm-hmm. we're going to use it and we're going to use it to save the planet from the blossom yeah that's what I think and the shadow realm is going to, going to invade Earth yeah yeah so yeah, so maybe double enemies coming coming from uh, both sides, sort of, sort of. Triple, speak. because April's gone crazy, and she oh, opened yeah. she opened she, a, she opened a portal to the Shadow Realm, jumped she? in to go kill the Shadow King. Excellent, but surely if she kills the Shadow King, she kills herself. She, she know, said, the bound. "This was such like a Matt Smith um, yeah. quote." I'm gonna go get my heart back. Opens a whole a rip in in space and jumps through it. And I've got to get get my hat. And she runs in, and she can generate her own swords from the shadow yeah, realm no, as well. I, I, it's I've amazing. She she generated them in front of a fire. You know what? Forget and... what I said earlier. It's the best. It's the best episode in the series. Yeah. I love a I love a good story. Mm-hmm. You don't need action, and there was actually action in this episode. You don't need action in Doctor Who, but it works perfectly in this one. I absolutely. Okay. It's my favorite episode of class so far. Right. Nine out of ten. Yeah. Well, I'll get on to watching it tonight, and uh, you know, hopefully, um, yeah. Hopefully, by uh, we are going to continue week. watching class without Brian because he no yeah. longer wants to tip in this section. <laughs> but because um, we can't wait for him anymore, and the sooner we can get done, the sooner we can move on to his section, whatever he wants to call it. I'm I'm sticking with history lesson. I like that history lesson with the who story. <laughs> You're gonna give it a theme song. I will write one. <laughs> You'll write, write one. A theme tune, you have sing to the perf- theme tune. You have to perform it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you need to watch. Yeah class is amazing it's this is how good it is because i don't listen to a lot of audio dramas mm. it's so good i might actually go back and listen to the the six, new the, 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 the big finish yeah, serial because yeah, yeah. it's that good right okay so um i saw you dropping away brian did yes. you think of some options for a poll yeah um gremlins oh from yeah gremlins okay mm-hmm. excellent i put rancor thank you the aliens in alien Okay. And aliens. Yeah, yeah. And aliens. Three. I think they're called necromorphs. Mm-hmm. I think they're called necromorphs. Edgar the Bug from Men in Black. Edgar the Bug. Uh, the giant cockroach. Yeah. Is that? And the sandworms in June. Sun. What What about tremors? The worms from tremors as well. Those could be a val- valid option. Yeah. Um. I have to work out. How I'm going to get those in there with the character limit. Yeah. Uh, do you think it's going to split the audience? I'm fed up of having a. I think there's a, a landslide. Yeah, I, I don't think there's there's anything there that would that would sort of be too, I think, too too potent above the others. So yeah. All right. So I'll uh, do you want me to message you with those later. You message me with those yeah. later on. I think Gremlins is going to be a landslide win, though, if I'm quite honest. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now, I'm waiting a long time for this. <laughs> Remember. Oh, I've been waiting to get you both because it's it's time for Universal Hogwash. Universal Hogwash, Universal Hogwash, is it real as it break? It's one all. Lewis won the first one. Brian won the second one. Pressure's on. Who is going to be the champion? The first champion, because the first two is just like, first of two wins basically gets to be the first champion okay. everyone will keep Best a record for who gets to keep it going now I'm going to, just, going to do it slightly different today I'm going to need one of you to do some writing 
Bri, Bri, you've got pen, so... <laughs> what we're going to do, I'm going to reveal the answers at the end. Okay, right, okay. Right. How does that sound? How should we do it like normal? It's up to you. Um, yeah, let's let's try this new way, see what see what happens. You know, we can always revert back if... Uh... So, to save the writing, just do uh, it's five, so just do one to five. Two, three, four. And put a yay or nay. Why or I was a. thinking a circle for Hooniverse, like the O, yeah. and a line for Hogwash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Or whichever, or a, tick, or a tick for Hooniverse. Yeah. <laughs> whichever is easy for you, Brian. So, who won the last one? Bri Bri. Oh, Bri Bri. So you go first. How about first, okay. <clears throat> the exploding planet. The Doctor has crash landed on the planet known as Alderaan. The Doctor needs to re re repair his TARDIS and get back to Earth with the help of Bail Organa. Will he get back to Earth safely before Death Star destroys the planet? I, I'm going with complete and utter hogwash on that I'm one. Definitely <laughs> going with hogwash on that. Yeah. I could have just made the description up, but whatever. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> the plot of Star Wars. Okay, the Highlanders, a remake of a classic 1986 film Highlander, but this time things are plural. Starring John Hamm as Conor McLeod. He will fight to keep his head or lose it or lose it. This comedy is bound to please young ones alike who will laugh their heads off. Right. I'm gonna go hogwash on this, you know, like because <coughs> I I'd I'd hate to get this wrong because Highlander is, is one of my favourite movies of all time. But I'm gonna go hogwash. Well let's make it interesting, I'll say that's Hooniverse. Okay. The Wheel in Space. <laughs> a documentary about the creation of a Mars rover, right up to its eventual emotional journey to Mars. Love is found, bonds are broken, and most importantly, lessons are learnt. Brian, Hooniverse or Hogwash? <laughs> it's, it's a real title of a story. Well, I think the description is hogwash. Good to you. I could just make the description. Obviously, I can make the description up, but is well, it a real? Can. Is it? Is it in the universe? Let's say hogwash. I'll go the other way on this. This is universe. Oh. So no matter what, we're back to a draw. <laughs> <laughs> The Space Pirates. Kermit and Gonzo were out walking one day when they suddenly got beamed up into space and held captive in a giant ship, sh giant ship, ship, spaceship. Will they escape the cabin before the cabin fever gets them? Um, spa space Pirates sounds familiar to me, uh, but saying that, I mean, it could be so many different things. Uh, we'll, we'll just go with uh, Universe on that as well. Well, to keep it interesting, hogwash. You can spell it. You can tell I enjoyed writing the descriptions on yeah, these. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the last oak tree in England. The last oak tree in England has been stolen, and the gang must go out and and search for the thief. But what they find isn't what they expected. Now, I've gone hogwash three times. So let's go for universe. I'll go the opposite. Gosh dang it. So it's a draw, no matter what. Okay, so the exploding planet. This is actually a lost episode of Doctor Who from Galaxy 4 Serial. Alright. So it's Hooniverse. Holy yeah. hell. But the description? Yeah, it's... No, only the title. <laughs> oh, so we just got to gauge the title and that's it. Yeah. The description yeah. can be hogwash. Just better throw you off. Oh, as no. usual. I didn't realise that was a rule. Just, just yeah, like, no, just no. like every uh, other week. I don't oh, think I, I know I've got the wheel in space one wrong then. Yeah. The oh, Highlanders. This is a lost serial that may never be found, starring Patrick Troughton. But the episodes may never be found. Stills are still popping up from time to time. Jeez. I've got one nil up, everybody. The wheel in space. This is the title of the seventh and final serial of the fifth season of Doctor Who. One all. The Space Pirates. This is another lost serial from Patrick Troughton 
And Ulsa has a super cool name. 2-1 to Lewis. And guess what? The last one is also Who Knew Birds. <laughs> <laughs> this is an episode of a horrible... This is an episode from a d- horrible show, K9. Just so you know, I did not make up a description. <laughs> the last oh oak God. tree in England has been stolen and the gang must go out and search for the thief. So two, two apiece. Two Just apiece. Two each. Well, Bri Bri, it looks well, like... We're going to have to have one more, yeah. one more round, I think. One, and perhaps I should understand the rules next time. So we're on 1.5. I did say in the first episode, I can make up the descriptions, but it's always the title that you're guessing uh, on. Okay, well, try and remember that for next time. <laughs> <laughs> now, try to think of a final... Of a final oh, a tiebreaker. Try to think you, of a tiebreaker. Interesting, yes. I think of a tiebreaker. I'm just, I'm just gonna name it. Okay. No description, just the no name. No description, just the name. Go. Cricket Man. Universe. It's Universe. Damn it. You know what? We'll be here forever. <laughs> yeah. We could literally be here forever until you oh, disagree. We just, keep, just keep agreeing with each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That seems to be it for this week's Who Be In Universe. It's been great having you both back. Brian. The gang's back together. The gang is back together. Are there any plans for next week? Are, are, are you not going to turn up for class? No, uh, we'll, we'll, de- well, I'll definitely be here. Bri, Bri, what are you saying? Uh, yeah. We can do Wednesday or Thursday again. That'd be fantastic. If, if, yeah. Yeah, I'm good class. with that. Yeah. So, you know, we'll finish it finish work at four next week so it might be a bit difficult to find somewhere to record Yeah. Uh, because just like me and Brian discovered today this room was actually being used all day today uh, we had posters all over the room if you look around there's actually bits of tape everywhere mm-hmm. so we may struggle to find somewhere to record but yeah. we'll work it out as we well, go along we'll miss that bridge when we come to it yeah so. we could just go out for a burger or something yeah yeah in public yeah. it's going to be difficult though the sound and everything Get a corner, we'll get a corner table <laughs> but um, yeah so Lewis actually no Brian do you want to read the, uh, the last part yeah. section 6 to wrap <laughs> from housekeeping be sure to check out our Twitter account at who Hooniverse and our YouTube channel just type who and Hooniverse into the search bar thanks once again to Zip Farm to design the logo and be sure to check out her deviant art again with Zip Farm like do you think she shrinks really small into your face and, pop and pops Pops the zits? Yeah, 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 and it just... What do you do other than make our logo? It's yeah. great. Yeah, oh yeah, another thing. When I've been uh, trying to promote the show, a lot of people don't know how to spell Hoovian Universe. So it's W-H-O-V-I-A-N. I feel like I'm talking to someone I just, deaf. <laughs> I, just, I, I just feel, you. you know... You're doing this wrong because the people who are listening to the podcast have already spelt Hoovy and Universe. Oh yeah, they have. <laughs> They're preaching to the converted. Yeah, we we need to we need to get it out to the masses. So uh, more more on the spelling on on the uh, on the Twitter account. I think. I just realised. I don't think I introduced myself at the start of the show. Did you not? No, I don't I think I did. I did an introduction. So can we do a farewell instead? Yeah, so you've been listening to Waggedy Wan, me, Jamie. <laughs> and me, Lewis. Yes, and me, Brian. You've been listening to Hoovian Hooniverse. Have a week! <laughs>